presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to Mike in Southern California. Hey, Mike, what's going on? Hey, Tom, nice to talk to you again. And I have to start out and first tell you, I love this trading room. This thing is great. This app, it works great. And uh, getting all the information, it, you're like instantly there. No delay, nothing. That's I know. Great. I Listen, Thank I you appreciate again. your growling problem with us. Your channel is in my pocket all day long. It's wonderful. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, man. You Thank you. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> well, welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go seven hours a day. We go 24 hours a day in the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about. Whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. It's about a great night, folks. Be impeccable with your word. Release the need to be right. When you believe something, you assume you, you are right. You may even destroy relationships in order to defend your position. Let go of the need to defend your position. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 169, NASDAQ off 103, SP's off 31. Gold, gold contract up $8.60 trading at 2015 an ounce. You get silver flat, $25.54 an ounce. Light sweet crude down a buck 87, trading $77.29 a barrel. Notes and bonds. You get the 10 year note up 14 ticks, trading at 114.20. The 30 year up 19 ticks at 130.10 and King Dollar. King Dollar trading down 107 at 101.860. The Euro. At 109, the yen at 134, and the British pound at 124 to 1 US dollar. Our phone number is 877 927 6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? Let me get this. Sorry about this, folks. One second. Let me get these shots up. Where are you, man? Tiger TV. There we go. Tiger TV. That. There we go. So let's go take a look at the S&P first. What do we have? We go look at the futures. We bring these futures up when we're just doing the update there. You know, this, this market here wants to break out its lows right now. So this is going to get pretty intriguing because it could be a nice ABC structure down. So what you have here, you can see, you know, bottom line, you came up to the highs of yesterday. It filled the gap inside the SPY, but the, the futures don't have a gap, of course. Bottom line is that we are at, let's see, you're at nine minutes. Well, it's going to, yeah, it's going to need a little more volume. You're at nine minutes in order to get an ABC structure down. The number you'd be looking for, well, would be looking for is 41, 41, 45, 50. We're at 41, 46, 25 right now. Um, it doesn't look to me like it's going to have the, the volume on a 10 minute to break it. Well, I get 309 right now. So you, you need 54,000 contracts, and thus far you only get 39. So when you see something like this, what very well will happen is that you will go back and forth for a few minutes because to see this long ranging bar, folks, we had the long ranging bar that someone sold into this in a monster way um, at 61,000. They'll do it again. That's the bar. That's how, that's how this normally works. It normally just doesn't go. Normally not, it's a one-trick pony. That's, that's my point. Um, you know, when you get a monster that's out there selling, they know exactly what they're doing. And say, okay, I got to break this down. And if it does get broken down, your next level here, let's see. So that's interesting. You can't even go back. Huh. No, let's see. Nine days, I'll bring it. There we go. So, we take a look at this. Uh, this would be a big level to break here. Because we've been, we've been hanging out here, man. Your next level, you have what that, 41.39. Yeah, that, that's, not, that's not enough. You'll go all the way down to the end. You go to 41.12. This, if this breaks, this, this will be 41.12. Be pretty easy to get there, too. If we go to the NQs, we take a look at the NQs out here. What we have with the NQs. 
Well, this is interesting. The NQs are stronger. The, NQ, the NQs, uh, bottom line, they've, they've, they've come down, but not like the S&P, man. Yeah. I mean, the NQs will still have to break the uh, 13046 in order to get traction on the way down. And that's just, that was, that was, that's today's uh, low. That's how we went topside, you know. So we'll see how that shakes out. Gold, we look at the gold contract out here. We have with the gold contract. Gold contract right now trading up $8.60. You get 156,000 uh, contracts traded. And you're going to need a lot more than that, man. That's the bottom line, is that this gold to me, you know, we, we did yesterday, you came down and you rejected lower price, but we had volume out there of 211,000 contracts. So that's going to get back down there to test that area. If we go into the treasury market, we take a look at the treasury market. What do we have inside the treasury market? This one's higher price, lower yield. So the treasuries, let's pull this out a little and see what kind of retracement we just did. So the treasuries did just over a 0.382 retracement. From, from the lows to the highs, starting to go higher again. That's saying the treasuries want higher price, lower yield. And then if we get our heads wrapped around the dollar, the dollar saved itself again off of these lows. You know, they, the, the dollar hit uh, 101, 632 today. It's a couple hundred bucks above that, uh, points above that rather, um, ticks above that. Not really a lot of action there. But what I suspect, which I said at the beginning of the three o'clock hour on that update, I think what happened here is that, you know, it's so wild, folks, okay? Markets pay attention till they don't pay attention. And then they don't pay attention till they pay attention. And what had happened is that I'm coming out of my car and I'm listening to this interview and simultaneously when I get back up in the elevator, the market is tanking and simultaneously, and what that was about, was the the interview is about the debt ceiling um and you know listen plenty of folks are saying on a continual basis that you know this could be a problem the difference was this the senator that they were interviewing he what he was talking about is that hey listen he had wished the democratic senator he had wished that they had done it on october when there was a lame duck session so that the democrats ruled everything they could have done that the debt ceiling ex expansion they didn't do it bottom line now there's going to be a fight, right? And then they asked him, like, what do you think the probabilities are? Well, the probabilities, he, he said, well, the probabilities that we'll get it done is just a little over 50%. It's like, okay. And then simultaneously you had BlackRock come out saying that, that they didn't think that people were taking this um, seriously. <laughs> and, you know, we'll, you know, we know it's selling. And we also know that this is the place that if the market's going to fail, this is where it was going to fail. You know, because you, you've come up to the to the highs of this consolidation. Now, the danger thing is that, you know, you didn't make the high. It's, you know, it, 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 it's rounding out. But, you know, you get that high volume low. So the consolidation is still in place. And, you know, there's so many folks that are saying that, hey, man, I think it's, you know, that's the top of the range. Well, guess what? It's probably a self-fulfilling deal right at this particular point. Stay right there, folks. Get our man, Mr. Tim Ward, coming up. And then after Tim, we're going to have uh, Fred Ernest, the CEO of Vista Gold, coming up. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. 
Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now trading uh, down to 215. You get the Nasdaq off 132. S&Ps are off 39. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Ord, as we do each and every Thursday at 20 past the hour. And you can reach Tim, folks, uh, at all times at Ord, O-R-D, dash oracle.com. Tim Ord, what's going on? Uh, thanks for having me on. Thanks for having me on. Did you... Uh did you get my uh, charts? I sure did. We have them up here, ready to rock and roll. All right, all right. The first chart, uh, I think that Pring, remember him? He's actually older than us. Martin Pring, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, Robert Pring, well, anyhow, he came out with a inflation thing, and a deep, well, anyhow, I made a ratio out of it. Okay. And so uh, that window down, you know, the top window is the RSI for that, uh, inflation deflation ratio, and below that is the uh, inflation deflation ratio itself. Okay. And this chart goes back to, um, I don't know, 2000, can't quite see it. You know, it goes back to uh, 2013 or something. Anyhow, so anyhow, when the ratio is rising, then the inflation is outperforming deflation and vice versa. And so I stuck an RSI to this thing. And it works pretty well, uh, so it gives a bunch of signals, not not very many signals, but it gives about a signal a year, give or take. And uh, the uh, blue lines are when the RSI of this inflation-deflation ratio falls below 30. Uh, so the market's kind of getting hit, uh, or inflation, or deflation's hitting hard against uh, inflation. So we got a signal back in August of last year because the RSI of this ratio fell below um, 30, and it turned up. And so this, this is kind of another signal. So this single, um, so this method gave a signal back in August and it remains on the signal. Uh, the sell signals don't work quite as good. They give, um, when the RSI gets above 70, it's time uh, that the market's gone up too quick. A lot of times it comes... Uh, sometimes early uh, last year, it nailed the, the top pretty good. But the one before that, it was kind of nailed a, a consolidation phase back at that 2020 time frame, and the market went down a little bit and came right back up. But, you know, this is – I do a lot of different type indicators, and I try to stick to indicators that nobody else uses. Yes. If everybody starts using an indicator, uh, then it kind of quits working. Uh, so I don't see anybody from this 
stuff I read around the internet. Nobody really uses this. That's so why we love you so well. much, Tim. <laughs> Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I said, that's why we love you so much. You have indicators that no one uses. Yeah. So, so anyhow, I put it this way. We, we had last week, we had a, uh, uh, I think, an 18-day average up-down volume of advanced client indicators that uh, when they fell below 40, which they did again last August, kind of matched this signal here. And when they get above plus 40, which they did on April 4th, I think that's the one we covered last week. And what that implies is a surge pattern, and that surge pattern usually has a rally pa uh, a rally pattern that lasts four or five months. Well, I gave a bicycle in, in March of this year, so you had four or five months to to come up to August uh, where the surge pattern may end. My point of that is, if if this indicator of the um, inflation deflation ratio RSI reaches up around seventy say, in August or September, yes, that would uh, that would bode well with the other indicators suggesting you may see a top in August or September. So I'm thinking we may have a rally all the way into August, September, then from there we may take a rest. Okay. But right now these surge patterns are pretty rare, uh, so you kind of want to get on them. But they, uh, you know, everybody's probably calling it a high here. We had a heck of a good rally, but... On the surge patterns, you'll have minor consolidations that may last maybe one or two weeks, but not a month. Uh, so I still think this GDX thing is still in a buy. And in general, we're going to work harder, probably higher all the way into August, maybe September. So we'll have to wait and see. Nice. Okay. Uh, and then the next um, shot, let's see. The next shot, I got the uh, monthly XAU shot. Yeah, it's a monthly XAU uh, gold ratio, which which is in the middle window there, and this I took it back as far as I could go, and it goes back to about 1984. And what I want to point out in this chart, uh, from 2014 to to now, the ratio XAU gold ratio on the monthly time frame really hasn't gone anywhere. It's just gone sideways, and, and in my opinion, this is building cause for the next move higher. Gold stocks. They really haven't done anything since the 2000 low. They really had a, a screaming market from about 2000 to 2000 level. And you could have bought anything and made a lot of money. Right. And it, and it went down. And gold right now is, you know, relatively speaking, it's done a lot better than the gold issues. At some point, I would expect this this um, XAU to gold ratio to break out of this sideways pattern. You know, the Bollinger Bands are kind of squeezing. I drew a... Uh, trend lines on this chart going back uh, from the previous highs and previous lows and uh, also connected to the previous highs going back to 2014. So we're in a kind of a tight range and it looks like we're trying to break above the downturn line connecting the highs going back to what 1995 or we're, we're kind of on that line right now. Yes. And um, I'm, I'm thinking what we're going to do is probably go go back all the way back up to point one seven five, which is that trend line we broke down through on um, my eyesight's not. Yeah, no, I anymore. see it. I see up. But but we had a sharp break down below point um, uh, one seven five, and we're kind of building a base way below that right now. I'm thinking we could have a sharp rally back up to one seventy five. And from a point one seventy five, and from there, I'm not sure, but uh, you know, things can only remain unfavorable for so long. Gold stocks are not going to go away. There is an industrial metal along with silver, so it's not some product that you don't need in everyday life. At some point, it's going to come back in favor. It's probably going to come back in favor in a big way. Yes, I'm not sure when, but we get above the upper trend line, which is on point oh nine. Um, I think you're going to see a, a big burst in these gold stocks. That's my personal opinion. Nice. But, and then the uh, next chart, the next chart, we're talking about the S&P, Tim. S&Ps. Uh, the bottom window is the VIX. Yes. And I, I drew the, um, the shaded pink area at the bottom. Yep. Uh, when the VIX got below uh, 17, we're right around still 17 today. And a lot of times when that happened, the mark was, which is the blue area posted on the chart on the S&Ps. So every time it got this low, it's actually 
kind of a, implies that we're kind of in a trending market. And I think that's what we may be having here. I don't uh, if if the VIX remained high, say you're around 20 plus, you know you got a big downtrend going or a kind of a bearish scenario. But if you get below 17, I'm, I'm thinking you're heading into a trending market. Also, if pre-election year, which is this year, April is up 94 percent of the time, and if January is up in a pre-election year, which it was over six percent, April is up 88 percent of the time. So even though we're down today here a little bit, I think April uh, could break above uh, the recent highs of 410 on the SPY. Okay. Well, listen, man, we appreciate the update. We look forward to speaking to you next Thursday, Tim. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And, folks, you can reach Tim at ord-oracle.com. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. NN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. The Dow. Dow Industrials right now trading down 209. NASDAQ's off 143. S&Ps are off 40. And I'll, I'll tell you, we got a movie coming up, folks, because this is just coming across the tape. And the uh, so up in the the Pearson uh, airport up in Toronto, the bottom line is that someone just hijacked. Check this out: three thousand six hundred pounds of gold missing, over a hundred million dollars worth of gold. And as we know, the Canadian Mounties always get their man. So this is going to be interesting. So here's the number: uh, the Canadians uh, National Police Force is investigating a heist. In Canada's largest airport uh, that may have netted thieves 100 million, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police confirmed that they are looking into a gold robbery at Pearson International Airport. Gold mined in Canada travels through Pearson on its way to the customers around the world. Um, bottom line is that they're missing 3,600 pounds. The Toronto Sun reported uh, the gold being moved through the airport had been stolen. 
So <laughs> it's like, this is where this is. There's going to be a lot of questions. Okay, who has the insurance? Um, <laughs> Who, whose gold is it, right? There's going to be all these things that are out there, which is pretty intense, folks, no doubt. Let's go take a look at the uh, NDX 100 and take a look at the strength versus the weakness inside the NDX. And we have out here, you got Lamb Research up 6.5%, 6 AMAS up 3.5%, Clax up 3.5%, taken away from it. Tesla's down 10%, you got Lucid off 6.5%, uh, Rivian's off 4.5%, Marvell Technology is off 4%. And uh, if you didn't see the rocket today, folks, unfortunately, um, the rocket exploded. It was, a, it was pretty cool watching it going up, there's no doubt. And then what you saw is that it started moving like in circles, actually. It started spinning, and then ba-boom. Unfortunately, it blew up. So, uh, they, you know, Musk and his team got a lot more work to do. And we're talking about, um, oh, let's go, well, let's go to Tesla first, because Tesla's getting smoked also. Tesla right now... <clears throat> This broke, so first off, it had the high volume low that's laying out there at 163, blew that apart, and it blew it apart with volume. So that high volume low had 191 million. Now the bottom, we're already at 191 million. So your next step, the next low, high volume also is 101, and then the next one's 64 bucks, man. So bottom line, if you wanna see something too, this is, you know, people have brought this up a million times, but you got Tesla even at these numbers at a 44, PE, okay? And GM is at a five PE, okay? Car companies, folks, run five to seven PEs. So take it for what it's worth. That's where I suspect it's going. Marbell, Marbell come out with numbers out here today. Uh, that They're hitting Marbell. Marbell right now is down. Oh, first off, the low for the year is 14, the high is 21. Pays a 6% dividend. It's trading down $2.11. Mm, <coughs> Excuse me, folks. And this has some volume behind the move. Let's see what this is doing. Uh, it's going to take a lot to break down, though. Yeah, because this... Okay, so the top of the high volume low here is 18.50. Yeah, we'll see how far, how far it gets into it. Right now, you're at 17.50. The bottom of it's 14.56. Now, you get a lot less volume, that's for sure but you needed a rejection of lower price also. That's what you'd be looking for. We're gonna take a look at the uh, oil market. What do we have with oil out here today? Oil's trading down a buck 87. Yeah, it's into the gap. We we're talking about this yesterday. So the bottom of this gap, you know, which, which folks are gonna be looking for is 75.72, 75.52, no, 75.72. You know, just dropped right into it. Now it's intriguing here. Watch this. If we put this up on a continuous contract, even with the Saudis basically pulling the wild card and, you know, bringing production back, you know, this had a hard time taking out uh, swing points. You know, you get up, you get over it, and then you gave it up in spades. We were over it, uh, let's see. Look at this. Actually, we never closed over it. Let's see. Yeah, this is, this is, yeah, this is bad. This, is, this wants lower price, man. Yeah. So, 76.90. If you get below 76.90, you're, you're going to see some real downdrafts inside this oil market. So, we'll see where it shakes out. That's pretty intense, though. There's no doubt about it. 877-927-6648. Let's see what we got here. Let's see what that s and is doing. So, S&P, you get down 40. You're only on down 35. Pull this back. Whoops, no, this way. Then this way. Okay, so... That I gotta pull up. Whoa. Yeah, we still got a high volume low, man. That If we go over to the... SPY, the SPY is a small ABC down to 409.10. And right now we've hit 410.27. And this is an intraday ABC down, by the way. Yeah, plenty of time to hit it too. 
as you can see on the spy, you know, this 10 minute bar, we are in, uh, yeah, well, it's only six minutes into it, but it doesn't look to me like it's going to get 2.8 million. Right now you're at, uh, well, you're 1.2. You could, you could, four minutes, you never know. But bottom line is that you did break the B, you broke it with volume, intraday. You know, the, the B point had uh, 2.1 million shares. You took that out with 2.8 when we came down. So these intraday ABCs, let's see if the Qs did the same thing. The Qs, the Qs had been stronger, and that was because of those uh, chip stocks. So the Qs, the B point, 1.6. 1.4. Yeah, the, the Qs didn't do it. Um, that being said, though, the Qs are having a hard time holding price also. It looks to me, folks, that we get a slow roll. A slow, so what a slow roll is, is that it tries to get the higher price. And I've been talking about that swing point for quite some time. But my take is it's not going to happen now. And it, this was intraday today. I put in a news, you know, an update on the newsletter. And what it was is that these, these are really tricky. And they're subtle, but it's like, okay... You're going to you start slow rolling, you know, about 10 this morning. And what, what, ha what was happening is that when you were coming back up to the higher level, it just couldn't handle it. And slow rolls are pretty dangerous, actually. Um, you know, and then, you know, this high volume low is, is hanging out here. So that's what I think we have out here. Um, and what you're going to see, so you can see this already. You can see where the, exp the volume is expanding already. You know, what you have out here is that you have the volume uh, right now. You see that expansion? By the end of the day, that's going to be an expansion of volume inside the market. Let's go take a look at Amazon for a couple of the tigers out here. And Amazon's having a hard time getting a higher price. Look at this. You know, yesterday you got up to that price point of uh, <clears throat> 105.12. Today you're at, you got to 105.25. Volumes contracting, high time holding price. You know, the way that uh, baby, excuse me, folks, the way that baby set up is, you know, it looks to me more than likely we're going to see is that the, the doll is probably going to stop moving on a counter trend bounce, getting a little bit higher. You know, stay right there, folks. We got our man, Mr. Fred Erdis, coming back. He's going to get us an update. The, the update today, folks, is going to be really intriguing because it's an update on policy in the Northern Territory of, Ala of Alaska, of Australia. Stay right there, folks. We're coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials down 179, Nasdaq off 125, S&P's off 36. We'll come right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now down uh, 177. NASDAQ's off 121. S&Ps are off 36. Uh, we have our man, Mr. Fred Ernest. Fred is the president and CEO of Vista Gold. We happen to own Vista Gold. Uh, Fred Ernest, welcome back to TFNN. Tom, good afternoon. Thanks for having me. Great to be. I'm so happy to hear. You know, I read this news about uh, the uh, Northern Territory government. Uh, and I mean, I want to talk about Vista and how this relates to Vista, because this is like, uh, you know, you do a lot of development in the gold market. I do a lot of development in the real estate market. And a zoning change is always good. <laughs> um, so explain to us, like, what may happen here. I guess this is just a, this is the, a final report, Fred. Is that correct from the Min Mineral Development Task Force? Yeah, that's absolutely right, Tom. Uh, a year ago, they formed a, a task force to evaluate uh, the things that are keeping mining investment from happening in the Northern Territory. And we've been, we've been lobbying for years to have reforms in the royalty scheme in the territory. Uh, presently, uh, and what we included in our feasibility study, the royalty that we would pay to the Northern Territory government under the present uh, net profits proceeds uh, regime would be about the equivalent of a, of a 7 to 9 percent ad valorem tax. And then ad valorem tax is the way that uh, like Western Australia and other states in Australia tax the mining industry. Western Australia, for example, has a 2.5% 2 2 ad valorem tax on gold projects. So, so you can see that there's a, a, a huge disparity. Now, the, the, the royalty reforms haven't been determined, but the recommendation is, is that the government needs to change to an ad valorem structure. And we expect that it will be something in the range of 3 to 5%. And so you, you can appreciate that when, like in using your real estate example, when real estate taxes go down, it's a good thing. Yes, yes, because it makes the aspect, folks, of more investors, you can hire more workers. There, there's, a, there's a whole flow that actually does happen down, you know, it, it's not a trickle down. It's kind of, it's pretty immediate because if you're going to banks or you're going to investors to get money, well, you know, if you have a, you know, a two to three percent difference when you're talking millions it's it's quite a bit of money a absolutely you know and, and another part that uh is is being recommended is that there be some sort of consideration so that in the early years of a project when the project is paying back the capital investment that the royalty rate be decreased thereby allowing a little bit more space for investors who really take the risk of the project to receive some cash flow in those early years instead of just all the money going to the bank. We think this is a tremendous win for the mining industry and especially for the Mount Todd Gold Project. And, and Fred, can you explain, you know, I, my, my understanding is that, you know, Vista has the biggest project right there in a tier one in, um, district. And if we go back, like if we go back years, was this always like a large district, and then folks just moved somewhere else? How? What happened in this district? Well, so so the the mining district where we're located is the Pine Creek district, 
It's been a gold producing district for uh, over a hundred years. Deposits have been have been developed, mined out, and closed, and so there's been a little bit of a you know flux in in that, the the activity in the Pine Creek district, and inside the territory, and and recognize that the territory is a huge place geographically. Like, yes, eyes like of uh, North and South Dakota, Minnesota, Kansas, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Missouri, Iowa, and and Minnesota. If I didn't name that, wow. it's a big place. Yes, and. and and yet there's only a quarter of a million people that live there. So it's it's largely unexplored. And the reason that it's unexplored is because why would somebody spend money in the Northern Territory to so they could pay the tax that we've been using when they could go to Western Australia and pay a tax that's a quarter? I see. So the policy structure trickles down and has impacts on business investments. And, uh, and like I said, we've... We've been working with government for years, but when they formed the task force, we were able to meet with the task force, explain our position, present hard data. And, and I'm very pleased that they've seen the light, so to speak. I think this is just outstanding for us. Yeah, I know. And it's very, it's common sense too. I mean, you know, it, you know, in many businesses, it's hard to, you know, basically pick them apart. But in this particular case, you can see, you know, I mean, if we just look at the United States, you know, these cities, they have incentives so that money comes in, you know, and, and businesses come in and it works. <laughs> I mean, you know, people send sometimes if the incentive is too big, they'll, you know, say, oh, that's no good. But the bottom line is that incentives like this actually work. Um, so let's switch gears for a little because since the last time that I had you on, you know, this gold price has got some juice also, you know, so that's that's encouraging in the aspect of where your feasibility study is, you know, versus where we are. And I do understand that, like, when you're doing feasibility studies, I, I mean, you have to bring the price of, have the price of gold tremendously under kind of where we are, right? Is that how this works? Yeah, we, we uh, typically use a, a backwards-looking gold price, uh, three-year average. You know, we, we, we do use a conservative gold price. Right, right. And the, the project in general, is there any, uh, any updates here? I know that, you know, we're, you know you, are there any updates in, inside of that project? Well, you know, just so we're, t we're talking about gold price, you know, the, the current gold price uh, offsets any of the impact of inflation over the last year and a half. And, and combined with the, the potential impact of the, the change in the royalty, and we're going to have to wait almost a year to find out what the change in royalty are, but, but those two factors combined add somewhere between a quarter of a, of a billion and, and $400 million to the NPV of the project. Right. This is the, the price. I mean, we've always talked, you and I have had conversations about the leverage to the gold price. Yes. And Gold price, uh, it makes a huge difference for Mount Todd. And and when it goes up like it has, I think we benefit as much or more than almost any other developer in, in the, the value of our project. Yeah, you got to love it. Well, listen, it's always a pleasure having you on. I'm, I'm really happy, you know, for you in general, for the company in particular, folks, because, you know, like all of us do a lot of work, folks. And, it's easier doing work when it's kind of going with you, <laughs> right? Do you know what I mean? It's, it's a, and you've, you know, we've all had it both ways. I mean, I'm just not talking about, you know, Vista Gold in general, but things are always easier for all the work that you've already put in place. And it seems that, you know, the gold price is where, you know, it's going higher. The dollar is pulling back, you know, all, it seems like, Fred, I mean, all the currencies are pulling back. That's, that's, that's kind of the reality out here, you know, around the world. So, um, people are getting, you know, I, I don't, I don't see a crash in the dollar, but I can see that dollar going back to 90, which is, you know, which would get that acceleration going in a big way. Well, listen, this is always a pleasure, Fred. You have a great one, safe one, and we look forward to having you on again. Very good. Thank, Thank you, Tom. Thanks, Welcome Fred. Us. Have a great one. Have a safe one. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. We have the Dow, the Dow Industrials. Let's see where this baby is. And Vista, by the way, folks, trades on the NYSE, American um, uh, VGZ. The high uh, uh, Dow is up, uh, down 189. NASDAQ's up 125. S&P's off 36. Stay right there. We'll come right back, folks.
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Forget you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow uh, down 150, Nasdaq's down 113, SPs off 31. So let's take a look at these indices. What you're going to have out here, I suspect, is a failure in price and volume. Well, you know, you, you just you're going lower. And you have an expansion of volume. That's what's happening out here. So coming into Friday, I suspect that we're going to have lower prices out here. I think this, I think we got to turn. And, you know, I don't expect the volume to be big tomorrow. But as we pop into next week, we can get some volume. So if that's the case, what you have here now is that you have the lower swing that's game once again. You know, and the lowest swing out here is that 380 inside the spies. And if we go into the, the queues... Look at the expansion of volume in the queues. That's a big one, man. We, we had made a high at 46 million. We're already at 55. We'll do about 65 million on the queues. You know, so we'll see whether the queues are going to basically, the queues and the spy, if you're just going to gap away in the morning. So and one of the heads up this morning, too, by the way, folks, I hadn't talked to them about this for a while, was the DAX. The DAX, bottom line this morning, couldn't hold price. And that, that's where I got the heads up that, you know what, I think we're going to turn in this uh, SPY because the DAX has been up at the same levels, been up high, no volume whatsoever. And, it, and, and, and they've had small price spread. You see how, see how tiny, if you're watching Tiger TV, see how tiny those bars are? And then, you know, intraday today, this was, this was down. I won't get the volume until tonight, but it was like, okay, 
you're turning, that's, you know, this is a one world market basically. And, you know, off, there's plenty of our funds that are over there and they sell, sell, sell as they're selling. You know, before they close, bottom line, it transfers right over here most times. We go to the GDX. Let's take a look at the GDX out here. What we got with the GDX, let's see what we got. Yeah, it didn't hold price and has light volume. See this? Yeah. This is, they, these want lower price right now, too. The GDX, we're at the 34.65. Not the end of the world. There's plenty of volume, you know, but, you know, this was a big run. I mean, the GDX went from 26 to 34. No, 36, you know, so... The 0.3825 or retracement is healthy. Always remember, folks, the bank can claw your heart out, the bull can run you over, and thank God there's always another trade. Come back tomorrow morning. Time to get a great show, 9 o'clock. Whee!